Well, 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 there's three holes in the ground. I was planning on doing another Skyrim video before Fallout, but the console I record on decided death was preferable to my gameplay, so the wasteland it is. Ah, 2015. I remember it like it was eight years ago. Todd Howard descended from the heavens to say Skyrim wasn't selling quite like it used to, and thus the fourth installment of Fallout was born. The Bethesda developers put hundreds of hours of work to create both realistic and wacky weapons for the players to use. But from where I come from, weapons aren't allowed in the ring. To kick things off, I made it look like my character had been in a fight with an L gun, and lost. It quickly became evident that this game wasn't set in Australia. It's a little early to be drinking. As a man with a warehouse full of infomercial gadgets, it took the vault tech salesman all of 20 seconds to convince me that a one-way nuclear bunker ticket was a strong investment. I made my character about as thick as two brick walls glued together and gave him an incredibly witty yet nuanced complex name. What can I say? War never changed. My toned, athletic body carried me to the vault while my domestic femoid partner wasted valuable weight optimization by carrying our only son and heir. Nah, we're definitely far enough away from the explosion to survive. Oh my God! Okay, I miscalculated. We all make mistakes. Like the diet of a fresh divorcee, it was straight to the freezer. I woke up just in time to watch Andrew Tate carry out a Sigma male grind set move on Nora. Sean taken, almost surely to be indoctrinated into his order. Knowing my boy was in safe hands, I re-entered the world single and ready to mingle. I whipped out Raid and Mortine going to town on the vault's infestation problem. Neglect arm day? <laughs> um, you won't be needing this beta. After opening the vault door, I emerged into what was left of the commonwealth. My first move was to make Sanctuary feel like home once more. Ah, just like Mama used to make it. Going Geppetto mode gave me Iron Fist and Bloody Mess for additional punching damage, an idiot savant for early experience game. We were definitely not ready to save Preston and take on the death. This win didn't bring me satisfaction. The challenge is to beat Fallout 4 with only my meat fists not hydraulic fists and power armor, so I reloaded a save. This time, I tactically hid in a broken building and timed my hits to avoid taking damage. Float like a balloon, sting like a flea. Some of you might have allowed power armor, but that's why you're there and I'm here. Preston asked me to join him in Sanctuary. Jog on. Besides, I plan on siding with the railroad this run. En route to Diamond City, I stopped to help the guards fighting the super mutants by making them more aerodynamic. I swindled my way into town with my devilish good looks and gave Mayor McDonough the good old-fashioned brawler's greeting. Piper told us the only one who could help find Tate Jr. was a detective named Nick Valentine who had gone missing during one of his cases. This is where the real game began. Rick was being held captive in an old subway tunnel. For all their trilbies, slacks and straps, I could tell immediately that none of these lads had ever engaged in a real bout of street fisticuffs. Hell, I killed Dino so hard he had airtime. What a poser! There was no time to talk to Dick as we still had to escape the vault. Skinny Malone stopped us at the exit. Vic's diplomatic approach was nothing against the eagerness of my fists. I told Mick I'd meet him back in Diamond City, but first I had to mediate a classic brother's quarrel. Kyle, no! This is where we learned that Andrew had been going by the pseudonym Kellogg, likely as a tribute to his godly min-maxed macro intake. We busted down his door faster than a Romanian SWAT team, but Captain Crunch had already skipped town. Roboman thought dog meat could sniff him out. But what he didn't realise is I knew exactly where to find him, as I'd been tracking his Instagram posts. Ah, shit. Fort Hagen was no match for Uncle and Toby, the synths burning up until they were rice and crispy. In round one, Kellogg got the drop on me and Coco popped a cap in my ass. I returned, all brand new. Using my Nutri brain, made the cybernetic brand ambassador my wheat bitch. With my fist nestled in his lucky charms, Kellogg was cinnamon toast crunch. I said cheerio to Fort Hagen and, uh, and, uh, cornflakes. Mourning the loss of my hero, I barely saw the blimp now hovering above the commonwealth, but was eventually able to find some solace in the copious amount of greenhouse gases it was undoubtedly spewing. This one's for you, Andy. 
Back in Diamond City, I put my scheduled bender on a hold for the chance to look into Kellogg's mind. In his dreamscape, we got to relive the moment he freed me from the old ball and chain and started my journey to Sigma male status. Kellogg was thinking of little boys, but I left that one to the ongoing investigation. We discovered that the Institute used teleportation to get in and out of their HQ. Conveniently, Dr. Amari had an ex-Institute scientist pen pal in the glowing sea. I'm not proud to admit it, but I only survived this part of the run by doping. Popping Radex like Tic Tacs. To be fair, the lizards were definitely on steroids too. You have to understand, we all did it back then. We were just trying to get ahead. One especially beefy boy blocked the entrance to Virgin's Hole, but like a thief in the night I slipped by. Gerbil drew me up some schematics for a teleporter, but told me I'd need to kill a Corsa to get a location chip. I can now confidently kill a base level raider in a single swing. The gunners in the building with the Corsa, however, take three, four, or even five swings. This usually isn't a problem, except if I get swarmed by them, or one is bold enough to use a rocket launcher at point blank range. I punched the Corsa to death, despite its best efforts to become John Cena, and taught a captive synth lady a valuable lesson about friendship in the Commonwealth. I then excitedly took the teleporter plans to my friends in the railroad, and forgot I hadn't actually met them yet. Desdemona was not ready to give a complete stranger a highly advanced bit of machinery, so she sent me to clear out an old railway safe house. I cannot stress enough how much I genuinely despise Deacon in this mission. He takes about 20 minutes to walk anywhere. I got to choose between a frontal assault or sneaking in. But just like my granddaddy always used to say, take your enemies hard and fast from behind. I pounded my way through the switchboard, retrieving Carrington's prototype for Desdemona, and officially joined the railroad. They gave me a cute and somewhat ironic nickname, considering I haven't touched a gun this whole playthrough. The signal interceptor plans looked like they'd been drawn by Charlie Kelly, but Tiny Tim deciphered them and gave me a grocery list of things I'd need to build it. While collecting my materials, I unknowingly entered a murder-suicide pact. Yeah, I think I lost you. Oh shit! Oh, we can talk about this, okay? Oh, oh, oh shit! Just three hours in, the teleporter was built and the railroad was ready to infiltrate the institute. All my hard work was finally paying off as I found my son. No, that's a robot. This old bastard here. In a shock twist, Sean had been taken from the vault 70 years before I was released, working his way up to leader of the institute. My cauliflower ear riddled brain failed to process any of this information, so I instead shed a tear with pride, simultaneously mourning the years that we could have spent building posts together. A hot and heavy storage room encounter led to talk of synth liberation. <laughs> It had been a big day. As a pleasantry, I met with all the division leaders, shaking their hands as an opponent would before a boxing match. These nerds didn't know what was coming. We now had to collect some data for the Great Escape. For some reason, when I entered Green Tech, my frames really tanked, but I was able to get through. The old plan was scrapped. We'd made the considerable leap from saving a couple of cents to just strapping some C4 to the Institute and calling it a day. The railroad and I decided not to tell our informant because he might not be so hot on the idea of us blowing up his home. Z1 was our new inside agent, and he needed some weapons for the great escape. I armed the synths with the contents of a plumber's work van, but at the moment we're on our own having to kill a giant clump of guards to get some allies. In order to not arouse suspicion, I worked with one of the courses to retrieve a defective unit for daddy. This proved slightly tricky as I almost had a heart attack dying to a fat man. But we brought the synths back to the institute. I chucked the big boy in the weapons crate for a laugh and we finally hit a vital part in the story. Before the battle for Bunker Hill, I informed the railroad that the institute were trying to reclaim synths. All of a sudden, I was involved in the second worst three-way I've ever been a part of. The Brotherhood of Steel had heard about the party, and just like that one person who you don't really like, but you don't have the heart to tell them, they invited themselves. I established dominance early in the fight by beating a knight to death with my hands. When the Founding Fathers said I had a right to bear arms, I don't think they meant these bad boys. <laughs> The hill now secured, the bunker part of Bunker Hill was a free-for-all. I knocked a fusion core loose from a knight and didn't have time to escape the blast. Eventually, I freed the synths in the basement and had a quick scuffle with the Corsa that was following me. Papa was about as happy as a man detained in a southeastern European gulag, but Ohana means family and family means no one gets left behind. 
and that also means that I only get a slap on the wrist. Ha ha ha. He called a big meeting to tell everyone that he was dying, but more importantly, he named me heir of the Institute. What can I say? I was the obvious choice. The old man then told us his last bucket list item, building a nuclear reactor. I jumped at the chance to get some last minute father-son home improvement style bonding. After all, with my big promotion, I'd soon be too busy to spend any time with him. To build the reactor, I needed to collect a beryllium agitator from the mash fusion building. Little did I know this was going to be the most challenging part of the run. The Brotherhood were gatekeeping it under the strict orders of Elder Girl Boss. But I knew the only gaslighting I could expect was that of the explosive variety. I prefer my Brotherhood members without the shell. The Knights really giving me a run for my money. My slow descent into the building made me a sitting duck. To make it worse, the Institute woman who was meant to be following me decided to peace out of existence. In direct violation of the chivalrous code, the Brotherhood were playing dirty. One of the Brotherhood knights even dropped in to spawn camp the elevator. I called foul play repeatedly, forgetting that one, I wasn't in the ring, and two, the ref had been dead for 200 years. I slapped on a hazmat suit, retrieved the agitator, and almost cried when I saw this running towards me. I did what any brave man faced by an assaultron would do and hid in the toilet. This only prolonged my suffering. I didn't realize at the time, but you have to kill every robot in this area. The sentry bot tanked my hits and shredded me with bullets. There was no way I could tackle this. In other words, I'd taken the opposite of Viagra and softlocked myself. The only way to progress was to reload an old save and collect a bunch more healing items. The doctor in Diamond City was kind enough to lend me some used needles, but that wouldn't be nearly enough. So I instead changed my strategy and went eco-friendly. While I waited for my purifiers to start working, I encountered some marital issues, gained mob connections, and accidentally became a drug baron. Wait, I knew these crimes didn't quite add up. Have I been chasing the wrong bald bearded man this whole time? It wasn't Andrew I was after. If I had more stim packs, I could have made a cooking joke, but I've got water instead. So that's the end of this bit. Now that I was the danger, I headed back to Mass Fusion. This time, the Institute lady decided to come along and acted as a very handy bullet sponge. The plan was to let all the Protectrons out and kill them before getting the Beryllium Agitator. It took some time, but the Sentry Bot was relatively easy to take down now that I was well hydrated. The only remaining challenge was the two Assaultrons. I lured one through the door and locked the other out, hoping to get some one-on-one one time. There was a slight misunderstanding, so I rinsed and repeated the process with the second, and was finally free from the hardest part of this run. I booted up the Institute's nuclear reactor because that's never gone wrong in the past, and Dad's son asked me to kill the railroad. Wait a second, they're my friends. By the looks of it, the Brotherhood beat me to it. My fists have now ascended to the point of being able to smash the fusion cores out of their armor. Desdemona wanted to strike the Brotherhood while they weren't expecting it. Always down for a backdoor maneuver, we were off to steal an aircraft. Cambridge was packed tighter than Mama Murphy's keister, but they didn't stand a chance against my muscly finger mallets. While we waited for Terry to start the Vertibird, reinforcements arrived, bringing Gatling lasers to what was specifically advertised as a fist-only fight. Angry that they'd ignored my pamphlets, I made the offender explode. I couldn't attack the remaining Verdi bird, and for a minute I was worried that the mission wouldn't progress till it had been destroyed. In a rare moment of emotional intelligence from Deacon, he noticed how sad this was making me and took care of them. Operation Blimp Go Bye Bye was underway. We arrived on the Pridwin, and I used an elaborate disguise to get past security. This lasted all of 20 seconds before they caught on and I got stuck in a death loop. The view was very reminiscent of a bad high school disco. Instead, I reloaded the save and managed to plant the explosives and escape before raising the alarm. The Brotherhood would no longer be a problem. Now the Institute's turn. I gotta say, I love how the railroad figures out a way to hack the teleporter so we can all storm the control room. While if you side with the Brotherhood, they're just like, big robot dig with nukes. For some reason, my game hated this part and crashed three times. Nothing brought me more satisfaction than my little fingies pummeling the scientists trying to escape. We slaughtered everyone in the main lobby, which actually took some effort. I found Sean and had a heart to heart with him before putting the death into deathbed. On his computer, I lifted the lockdown and planted some more explosives on the reactor without a hazmat suit. The irony of wearing Brotherhood of Steel and Institute armor while siding with the railroad was only just dawning on me. We took the weird synth Sean with us because I'm kind, compassionate, and his death wouldn't have been on my hands, and unfortunately, that would have meant him not dying by my fist. 
We got to a safe distance, and with the press of a button, the Institute met the same fate as the Brotherhood. With that, I beat Fallout 4 with only my fists. If you like this video, please leave a like and comment what challenge run you'd like me to do next. If you dislike this video, please leave a dislike and I apologise for the 15 minutes of life that I've stolen from you. Have a great one, Chiefs.